The French diet, the paradox, has begun to intrigue foreign researchers. Among them, Dr. Kurt Ellison, a cardiologist and professor at the School of Public Health at Boston University. Dr. Ellison is launching a major study in four countries, comparing three nations' diets over a one-year period with the French. He is in Lyon to consult with French scientists and to have the odd good meal. I was just looking in this restaurant where I was having lunch. This is something you just wouldn't find in an American restaurant. <laughs> A Leonese salad bowl, which is pig's head pate with parsley, black pudding, which, you know, is very fat, and potatoes in oil. Uh, double fat sliced tripe sautéed with onions. <laughs> and hot sausage with lentils and potatoes and oil. This is routine stuff. The farmers have been eating this for years. They've been eating a very high fat diet, it seems, and yet they don't get heart disease. If we took the same diet and put it into an American, you know, we would all be suffering from coronaries at an early age. There's something about the French that seems to be protecting them. And we're, and we're not sure what it is we're looking for. Most American nutritionists agree that dairy fat, including cheese, is a major enemy to a healthy heart. And here is the paradox again. In France, there are cheese shops everywhere and hundreds of varieties and textures, from triple creme to soft breeze and camembert. Each French man, woman, and child consumes a full 40 pounds of cheese each year. Does cheese deserve its bad reputation? Dr. Renault says no. It is milk we must be careful of. Surveys in different countries show a very, very strong relationship between the intake of milk and the mortality rate from chronic heart disease. While for cheese, it's, there is no relationship at all. Dr. Renault believes it is the difference in the nature of calcium in milk and cheese. In cheese, perhaps because of fermentation, the calcium neutralizes the fat, combines with it, and it is then excreted by the body rather than absorbed. Whole milk, he says, promotes heart disease because the calcium will not combine with the fat, which is absorbed into the bloodstream. He's tested his theory on rats. And uh, here is our study with comparing camembert with milk. You see these uh, first two cages are camembert and these one uh, are fed milk in comparable amount of fat and calcium. And His proof just... is in the rat doo-doo. The cheese-fed rats had eliminated virtually all the dairy fat. He also found that in dissecting the animals, the milk-fed rats' arteries were clogged while the others were clear. It's a wonderful theory. Uh, he, has, he is the only one who's really doing research on this right now. As far as I'm aware, we're not doing any research on this in the United States right now. This is something new. And it's a very exciting uh, possibility to help explain this paradox. Yet, if you go to, to the north in France, there not, is not that much olive oil. They're using more there butter is no and cream. Oil. Of course and not. yet the rates are still lower there. Now, why are, why are the rates in, in Lille uh, lower than in, in Boston? Well, uh, my explanation is, of course, the consumption of alcohol. There has been for years the belief by doctors in many countries that alcohol, in particular red wine, reduces the risk of heart disease. Now it's been all but confirmed. The wine apparently affects the platelets, the smallest of the blood cells. It is platelets that cause blood to clot. They prevent bleeding. But they also cling to rough, fatty deposits on the artery walls, clogging and finally blocking the artery and causing a heart attack. The wine has a flushing effect. It removes platelets from the artery wall. So the answer to the riddle, the explanation of the paradox, may lie in this inviting glass. <laughs>